Alright guys, welcome to your 52nd biology lesson, and in this lesson I want to start talking about meiosis. Now before I start talking about the individual stages and phases of meiosis, what I want to do is I want to give you guys a real brief overview of the entire process of meiosis. And I want to do this because after learning about mitosis, meiosis can be kind of confusing because there are a couple key differences that we need to take away before we begin. So we already know that most of the cells in your body have 46 chromosomes. And I already said that chromosomes were pretty much little packages of DNA. Now I say most of the cells in your body, like your lung cells, your skin cells, your, I don't know, maybe your stomach cells, every cell in your body except your sperm cells and your egg cells have 46 chromosomes. Now in mitosis, what happens is the cell, the original parent cell, is split in two and we end up with two new daughter cells identical to the original parent cell. However, in meiosis, the process is a little bit different because, first of all, instead of making normal skin cells or, you know, stomach cells, lung cells, what we're making is egg cells and sperm cells. So we already know that egg cells and sperm cells have 23 chromosomes each. So this is the first main difference between meiosis and mitosis because basically instead of making normal cells, like I said, we're making sperm cells and egg cells and also the resulting cells only have half of the chromosomes as the original parent cell. So again, like I said, that's the main difference between meiosis and mitosis. Now another thing I want to point out is that most of the cells in your body are diploid. And whenever I say this, what this basically means is that they have two sets of chromosomes. So let's go ahead and say that we're looking at a cheek cell, for example. So this is the nucleus of a cheek cell. So remember that I said that you have two sets of chromosomes. One set is going to come from your dad. So here's a set from your dad. And another set is going to come from your mom. Now for every single chromosome that you get from your dad, you have another chromosome that from your mom that is pretty much its match. It's the same chromosome, it's not the same chromosome, but it's physically similar in both shape and size. So whenever we have two chromosomes that match each other, one from your mom and one from your dad, we call these homologous chromosomes. So remember, I said that every cell in your body, with exception of egg cell or sperm cell, are diploid or they have two sets of chromosomes. One chromosome from your dad and one chromosome from your mom. Now every chromosome from your dad has a matching one from your mom that is the same size and shape. And whenever they form a pair, or find their match basically, we call those homologous chromosomes. So now we know that in most of the cells in your body, you have something called homologous chromosomes, which is pretty much the one from your dad that matches up with the one from your mom. Now we already know that they're basically the same size and the same shape. And again, those are called homologous chromosomes. Now we also know from earlier on that during interphase, all of the chromosomes in your body are duplicated. So each chromosome is going to consist of two identical copies called sister chromatid. So after interphase, you end up with something like this. This, 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 and this. So basically, this is your starting point after interphase. You basically have all of your chromosomes in your nucleus that are duplicated and each chromosome is going to consist of two identical copies as we learned earlier called sister chromatid. So now that we have better background or understanding of meiosis we can move on to the different phases and we can now understand how these individual sister chromatid can become individual cells, sperm cells or egg cells with the genetic information that you need or the pieces that you need to become a human being.